a lapwing that I think for many of you may, may be an, a new addition to your bird lists, a wattled lapwing. And once this one turns its head, you'll be able to see where it gets its, oh, there you go, gets its name, the wattled lapwing, based around the wattles at the base of its beak. So quite a peculiar looking bird. It's got a very similar look to the wattled starlings, which incidentally we see lots of here gathered on the backs of zebras, which I've never seen in South Africa before. And there we go, wattled lapwings, wattled and spur-winged. Lapwings are the ones that are probably going to be new birds for many of you. But it's very, very, a very nice and easy to identify bird, especially for our new viewers who perhaps are starting off on this whole journey of learning how to identify the different things. A wattled lapwing in amongst the herd of buffalo. They've probably been catching insects that the buffalo have disturbed as they move through the grass. And it's so funny, I come past this buffalo herd every single day, and every single day I still get the same looks from them. What are you doing in our neighborhood? What are you planning on doing to us? There, that look. Here's a wattle starling. Is that a wattle starling on the back there? Sense? That the, that's it, buffalo behind. That one, there we go. So we obviously see lots of ox peckers on the backs of animals. Yes, it is. It is a wattle starling. How very convenient. Oh, ox pickers we see all the time, but I bet you haven't seen that many wattled starlings on the backs of things like buffalo and zebra. Let's hold on one moment. I'm just going to need to move out of the way. I'm blocking the entire road, somewhat selfishly. Oh, never mind. He found a gap. Actually quite impressed. Is there another one coming? No. 